introduction. My name is John Richards. I'm part of the Central DevOps Transformation team at Lloyds Bank. Um, and I'm here really just to give you a slight introduction before the main event where Don's going to talk to you about his experiences. Um, I suspect most of you have heard of Lloyds Bank. I hope probably everyone's heard of Lloyds Bank, the largest retail bank in the UK. We have Halifax, Bank of Scotland, um, we own other subsidiaries like Scottish Widows and Next Leasing, etc. Um, and we're doing our DevOps journey, unsurprisingly. I suspect everyone here is on that. Um, we're trying to transform the company, both in terms of organisation and process. <coughs> and um, there's a great many places around here who are doing an absolutely amazing job of, uh, of making that happen. Um, again, usual kind of principles, the culture, the lean, the sort of question about what's the most difficult part. I think, you know, once you've got that sponsorship, it's then on to the change in the hearts and minds, which um, I think actually, it's fair to say, the engineering level, people are, are very excited about. I think you know, then sometimes it's bringing some of the other people along on that journey with us. And again, you know, the one thing I'd say is you get the trailblazers, you get the advocates, and those guys' enthusiasm rubs off, and all of a sudden people want to be a part of it. And then you've got that, that tipping point where actually not being a part of it, you know, you're not in the game. So, with that in mind, um, I'm going to pass over to Don and let him do his thing. Cool. Uh, morning, everybody. Uh, so, yeah, my name is Tom Harrison. Uh, so, I'm a software developer at Lloyd's Banking Group. Um, so, Rick um, probably had the most IT experience in the room. I probably got the least. Um, so, I won't be giving um, kind of expert advice or a huge amount of, um, kind of wisdom today, but more just telling a bit of my story uh, about being a millennial on the mainframe. Uh, so, um, what is a millennial? So there's kind of variations in definition. Um, millennials are generally um, seen as those born between the early 80s and the late 90s. Um, they're the uh, largest generation in West Western history and um, research has found that they are uh, confident, uh, they're community minded and they're marked by optimism and idealism. And they're also the first generation to grow up with the internet in an um, electronics field and socially networked world. So, this kind of familiarity with technology means that they are experts at understanding interfaces and visual languages so they can um, kind of move on to new software and new devices um, and new operating systems far quicker than older generations. Um, so in short, Millennials are basically a, a group of um, tech-orientated multitaskers with short attention spans and um, big dreams. Um, a potential downside of this for um, technologies and employers is that Millennials are always looking for something new um, and exciting and better. There's therefore quite an interesting contrast when you match this demographic <laughs> against the mainframe. Um, as I'm sure all of you know, the mainframe is um, a stable and steady beast um, that's been around for more than half a century. And, uh, and it's been at the core of most large enterprises, been the computing power of most large enterprises for that long. Um, the interesting thing about the mainframe is though, um, although it's been kind of around for so long, it's, it's stood the test of time. Um, it was born, I think, in the 1950s, so it's technically a baby boomer. Um, but uh, although kind of critics have been prophesying its death for like decades, um, it's still processing billions of transactions a day. So the mainframe isn't going away anytime soon. Um, so really, the relationship between millennials and the mainframe is one that has to be discussed and talked about. Um, by 2025, the majority of the workforce is going to be millennials. So um, this can't really be ignored, and, and sooner or later, millennials will be the ones owning the mainframe. So um, after completing a physics degree, I joined Lloyds Banking Group in 2014 as part of a grad scheme. My friends and peers were going into um, development jobs using IDs like um, Eclipse, which we mentioned earlier, and Microsoft Visual Studio. I, however, was assigned to the Debit Cards software development team, um, where I was told I'd be uh, using the mainframe primarily. At the time, I didn't really know what the mainframe was, so being millennial, um, I Googled it. 
Um, <laughs> um, I was uh, within a few weeks. I was put on a, um, a course to learn PL1. I'd never heard of that, so Google that as well. And then a few weeks later, a cable course, which again I had to Google. Never heard of it. Um, I was brought up using user-friendly interfaces. Um, our family's first computer was Windows 95, so even stuff like DOS seemed kind of ancient to me. So. Being put on such a kind of an ancient looking screen, um, old school, I think it was mentioned earlier, old school definitely, um, really took a fair bit of getting used to, but I kind of pushed on with it, um, mostly just intrigued by the kind of retro novelty of it. He's <laughs> <laughs> so cool, because he's so retro. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's got a real great look to it. Um, and within, within a few months, I got to work on um, some fairly um, big projects with the mainframe. But it always felt um, restrictive and slow, and there's no option to spread it across multiple screens. Um, my mouse was almost completely untouched, um, and it just felt that like basically everything that I'd kind of any kind of development experience I had before was basically unused. Um, I'm not sure if it's completely fair to blame it for this as well, but after a year of using the, um, the old green screens, I had to wear glasses full time at work, and so it was kind of moulding me into this despicable stereotypical geek. Um, but, but anyway, yes, yeah, so that, that was my kind of um, first experience with it at Lloyd's. Um, so about a year ago, when um, Topaz um, Workbench was first being trialled in my team, I basically leapt at the opportunity to get it installed and play around with it, give you the procedural for a programme. Um, and uh, for me, that, that just in incredibly increased the efficiency of doing things like impact assessment, impact analysis, um, where you can quickly understand the flow of a program, um, which is incredibly important. Sorry, uh, does yeah. that diagram on the right actually help you then with the code? Yeah. Uh, when I've seen it, 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 it tends to look like a bit of a mess. Um, yeah, so I, 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 yeah, that's a good question. I think it, I think it absolutely does. I think, um, I think it's probably not the best screenshot that I've put on there. Um, on my new widescreen monitor, it looks a little bit better, I'd say. Um, but I think, I think there's definitely a point of, of understanding. Now, this is just a test program, so this isn't actually a real. didn't want to share any lobbying to secrets in this. Uh, but uh, I think there's a point where you, you know, you're looking. It, it is complicated, but compared to looking at just a list of, of words on the program, I think there is a point where you know, you can, I can, you know, I can click on these and it'll take me to that point in the program. Yeah, we could discuss it later. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I found it useful, uh, okay. definitely, yeah. Um, take up uh, amongst the team was kind of mixed in some ways. A lot of us were were really excited about using Take Up's workbench, but some of the kind of older, um, die-hard mainframe programmers were a little bit sceptical, um, having kind of spent years honing their mashing skills on the keyboard using the function keys. Um, but interestingly, the more I kind of used the tool, the more I began to notice people looking over my shoulder as curiosity kind of got the better of them. Um, and before long I was having to help them install it themselves as they kind of realised the, the breadth of features they were missing out on. Um, and I kind of unwittingly became the Topaz champion for our site. Um, one of the features the kind of more vintage developers really appreciate is the ability to adjust the, the viewing settings so that it can actually look like the old green screen, so you can actually put a kind of black display. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can put a black display. And that's, so we've already um, delivered a, a fairly high profile project um, since taking on Topaz Workbench, um, doing uh, the majority of the design and build with that. And, um, and for me, I found a huge increase in efficiency um, in my work. Um, I think statistics say that when you've got dual monitors, you're purportedly 35% more efficient in your work. Um, but I found that everything was 10 times quicker from um, looking at copy books um, to going into the spool view output and even um, debugging line by line with Expediter. And it just feels like we're constantly finding kind of productivity shortcuts in the old way of doing things. And, and there's a real feeling that there's, a, there's kind of a whole new toolbox of things to work with now. Um, one, one afternoon, I think last week or the week before, we actually we couldn't use Topaz for a couple of, uh, couple of hours and so ha had to do some development on the old green screens and, and going back to that felt so tedious and slow after kind of the slick experience of using um, kind of an interactive ID. Um, um, yeah, one of, the, one of the great opportunities I've had being involved in Topaz as well is um, taking it on the road and showing it to different teams within the bank. Um, one session we, um, we showed the software to some uh, 
directors uh, within the bank and within about half an hour we got them all Cody and Cobalt which is really fun to see and <laughs> I, I think if we tried to wait and do that on the main French screens they probably would have walked out um, so it's yeah it's great just to see they actually got really excited about that um, so the last thing I'll just mention is kind of where we're going as a team continue to integrate further DevOps software I mean our route to life so we're looking at um, particularly Jenkins and Sonar um, and Urban Code Deploy, just moving towards that kind of continuous deployment um, that is automated as possible. And obviously the, these kind of things are, are possible without a nice um, GUI interface, but the integration with things like Sonar Lint um, giving you kind of real-time real um, information just completely transforms that, that user experience for us, I would say. Um, I think for me, um, as cheesy as it sounds, it really, I think Topaz Workbench ha has really felt like an investment in millennials because um, it does make you feel like you're working on something kind of new and exciting and better. And I think that is actually key for engaging millennials in, in mainframe development. Um, it, it, it kind of broadens the width of your view um, across multiple uh, monitors, but it also, even more so, kind of broadens the depth of your view and providing these kind of um, program analysis features and, and tools such as um, kind of giving intelligence content of a program and maintenance effort of a program really simply, um, you know, really, really gives a whole new experience there, I would say. Um, so, uh, yeah, at the end of last year, our... Um, Lloyds Banking Group took away three prizes at the, um, the annual DevOps Industry Awards um, and one of those awards was um, DevOps Team of the Year which actually went to my team which was really exciting um, so it feels like in, in a way our team were really able to kind of drive forward in DevOps and mainframe um, technology and, and for us um, Tomas Workbench has been a really big part of that um, journey so yeah thank you very much Uh, Don, I think it would be fair to kind of share some of your insights and your ideas on some of the questions, right? So let's pick some that I think would be of relevance. And I think the, the one here about if IBM releases a free version of ZDT for personal use, wouldn't that help solve the scarcity of talent? What's your view, being, being that target demographic? I, I, think, I think, to be honest, it's a, I think for millennials, or for my generation at least, I think it feels very much that... Um, like I kind of said, we want to work on something that feels interactive um, and that feels modern and new. Yeah. Um, but when I talk to my friends about um, mainframe development, most, I mean, most of them don't really know what the mainframe is, or if they do, it's kind of like a, a, a funny old thing. So I think, I think in, terms of, in terms of getting people my age to work on it, we need something that's interactive and that's fun, that feels modern. Um, I think the, the kind of the application of what you're working on with mainframe stuff is often really exciting and really interesting stuff. Um, working at Lloyds Banking Group, you know, we're handling bill uh, millions of transactions really, we're handling really important stuff, so the application is there, but I think that there needs to be an interactive front end for us to feel like this is something kind of worth, <laughs> worth putting your time into. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and again, sorry, go on. Can I just start to ask a personal question? What got you interested in mainframes and working as a developer on mainframes? Or was it a bit of an accident? Yeah. There yeah, I fell into it. Yeah. So when I when I applied uh, applied to so Lloyd's Banking Group, I, it was uh, quite an open application, so I was, could go into any team possible. So I was I was just assigned to a, a team that, that ended up using mainframe. Um, so there would be an opportunity to kind of move away from that if I, if it didn't really fit with me. But I kind of just got stuck in with it, and um, and it was just interesting. It was something different, and it's it's a kind of a niche skill to pick up. So yeah, yeah it kind of felt like something. Yeah. Any other questions for Dom? There must be. Oh, I have a question. So, based on your background, is, is there any areas where you think the uh, mainframe environment could do even a better job for you to get more kind of more excited or better leverage your skills? Are there, is there that gap you can see? Like, you would be king for a day on the mainframe. King for a day on the mainframe. Well, that's a good question. Um, yeah, so really, I think it's it's just continuing to make things more straightforward and make, making things easier to do and making things more interactive for me. I think um, so. Yeah, I th to be honest, this has felt like going moving to tables has felt like such a leap. It's felt like I'm almost a king for an hour in in a funny way because it, it just felt so slow and restrictive before. So I think it's almost that, that that ability to actually use my mouse and to write. You know, to if I want to allocate a data set, I just right click on an old. And I would want to just say, allocate a similar one to this. 
you know, there's no going to 3.2. So I feel like there's, there's already a huge amount of features there that are just making things so much quicker and straightforward already. Um, but uh, yeah, it's good. I'll have a think about that one. Okay, good. Yeah. still got a couple of hours. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask this one about, so can Clubhouse be flexible to offer integrations with Git and Jenkins? Yes is the answer. Could I have your view on why that's important? I know you touched on it on your screen earlier, but uh, that integration capability with other th third party tools, what's your view on the benefit of that? Yeah, definitely. I, well, I guess, I guess a big part of it is, you know, it, you always want to use the best tool for the job. And it seems like at the moment Jenkins is doing a you know, brilliant job, and, and the, the guys in our team that are really working with Jenkins are, are constantly pulling new things out of, out of that. So if you've just got, if you just get given a new tool that can only do one thing and tries to cover everything, it's not going to cover all the bases mm -hmm. in a way that if you can use, you know, the best um, tool for um, deployment, if you can use the best tool for for what um, for kind of code coverage or, or the best tool that's going to um, look at the quality of your code, like Sonar does. If you can integrate all those to, together, I guess you get the best of every world. Mm -hmm. um, if your tool just tries to do everything. And it doesn't integrate with anything else. I think you're going to miss out on things. So I think that integration is, is really key to getting the best out of what's in the market and using it all together. I can agree more. That that right there, Dom, is really the reason I went to Cockpit. Quite honestly, is that it, I wanted to be a part of an organization that was very focused on software development for the mainframe, but worked very well with the leading providers, tools like Jenkins, Azebia, Sonar. I wanted to be able to work with those tools. Let us focus on the, on the mainframe stuff, but let's work with tools that have already got share, mind share, market share with our customers. Instead of asking them to walk away from those investments, those technologies with more proprietary software, to leverage our software to work with those investments that they'd already made. It was, that integration strategy, I think, is, 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 is good. It's good for customers. It's pragmatic. It makes good business sense. It's, it's one of the reasons I came. So in your view, Dom, DevOps on the mainframe, do you think it's specific to banking? Because that's where we're seeing a lot of attraction at the moment, or do you see it being useful across the industry? Yeah, interesting. I think I probably haven't got a huge amount of expertise to answer that question, having only worked really in banking um, in my short career. But I think a lot of the time when, I'm, when you're working um, in IT, you can, you can always forget the application of what you're doing. It's more that you're, you know, you've got this data and you're trying to make it do that. Um, and so for me, it, it seems like you know, DevOps is the best way of um, if, of getting your, you know, your, your software where you want it to be, your production software where you want it to be, whatever the application. I don't feel like there's a huge focus on, on banking in terms of, of what DevOps is doing. Or I think, yeah, it seems fairly broad. How it's much are they paying you? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I agree totally. I mean, that's been my experience. 40 years of doing this business. Certainly there are things from an from a, from a industry standpoint that are important with regard to solution delivery, but with regard to software delivery, I've, we've made this work in just about across industries, multiple industries. Financial industries are trying to take advantage of it because they're heavy users of the mainframe. Any final questions before we break for some lunch? Stuart? Have you added any other pleasant things to your know, topaz um, the only thing we've been particularly working with, I think, at the moment, is SonarLint. So that's the, that's the one, the one kind of plugin I guess we've used uh, for now. Yeah. So um, yeah. I, I know there's certainly, you know, an in keen interest on Git and other technologies that, that wasn't on our original slide of kind of uh, products and things like that. But uh, it's a growing, it's a growing ecosystem, as you well know. And I think that's one thing that the DevOps community brings to this: is new ideas and Dom's point around best of breed, really, in that space. Olivia. Where did you find the Sonar logo? I have not seen this one for many, many years. <laughs> it was just Google Images first option. Uh, <laughs> just be no. careful, you might want a royalty for that. Right. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please give Don a massive round of applause.